bless you, Lord. We thank you. We bow down because you're worthy to be praised. Speak to us through your word because we need to hear a word from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Will you get your Bibles and turn to 1 Chronicles, Old Testament. You get to the book of Kings, you're close. You get to Nehemiah, you passed it. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. We will be looking at verses 9 and 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. My subject this morning is how to live above average. How to live above average average or how to live above the ordinary you know we see people from time to time who are just coasting through life no aim no purpose I, I just say they're waiting to die because what else is there if you're not doing something but I want you to know this morning that God never created you to live a mediocre life God never created you to live an average life. Because the man or woman of God don't live average lives. They bloom and blossom for God. I want to tell you that you are designed for excellence. You are designed for excellence. You have been uniquely created in God's image to do marvelous deeds. Instead of being one in a million, you are one in 7.8 billion. I checked it out. Did you know that this over that the world's population, according to Google, is 7.888 billion? That's a lot of people. And out of all those people, you are unique. God don't make duplicates. Amen. You're one of a kind. Amen. 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 There's nobody like you. And, and some of you are thinking right now, bless the Lord. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, you know. <laughs> but you're unique. You're one of a kind. God has special things for you to do then. If you're unique. Everybody wants to be recognized. Don't they? Everybody wants to know. They gain a little. Somebody says that. Everybody gets their 15 seconds. Of being famous. Amen. And that's true. And I also want to let you know that. It is necessary. That you be recognized. Because you need the recognition. Why? I think because of, for your own emotional health. People who think they're nothing and nobody just, they die. They die. I don't have to go too far back to tell you about the hopes and dreams of kids. I remember our kids, you know, uh, when they were little, they're excited. Something is, is, is missing from our society. Remember when you were growing up as a little kid? Your parents used to make you decide what you want to be. What do you want to be when you grow up? And you got to come up with something big. So most of us knew what we wanted to be since we were about four years old. Because they keep drumming it into it. What do you want to be? What do you want to be? What do you want to be? Now, we come to grandparents now. You know, and uh, I said to, uh, uh, I remember when my son decided that his son was going to get into sports, right? And I remember he, he likes to run, and he, I remember him coming and said, Granddad, I'm running 100 yards. 
and I'm the fastest guy in the group. I said, let me see your muscle. This little thing on him. And he, you know. And I said, so what are you running? 100 meter and the 200. And I said, what about the 400? No. 100 meter, 200. Because I'm the fastest 200 and the fastest 100. In other words, he, what he's really saying is, why do I want to run 400? This is, this, is, this is my bag, granddad. This is my grand. And he's so proud of it. He gets me excited. Yes. Only trouble he wants me to race him. Bad idea. I said, it's, you know. But he wants to be somebody. He wants, to, he wants to stand out so that there's something about him. Every time they look at him, every time you look at him and say, he's the fastest guy, you, you just have to watch him blossom. We all want that, don't we? We need somebody to do that to us. You know, and even as adults, we, you know, we do same, the same thing as adults. Only we're a little bit more subtle. But we do it with our cars. Ever hear people talk about their cars? They're telling you things the poor car don't have. <laughs> you know. We do it with our clothing, the homes that we live in. And all the time, we're, we're, what are we saying? Look at me. Look at me. Each of us have a need to be different. Because God has made us different. We want to be excellent in whatever we do. And we expect excellence from everybody we know. If, if you're trying hard in school and your friends are not doing much, guess what? You need to get friends who are excited about learning. Because you're going to end up on the street corner with them too. And you don't want that. Don't, you don't want that. Now, in First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 10, we're told about a man named Jabez. And by the way, the book of Chronicles... I think sometimes you, you have great expectation of reading the Bible through that you make in January. I'm going to read the Bible through this year. You know? And then you get the Chronicles. Especially First Chronicles. And, and everything's over. You know? Because in the first nine chapters of Chronicles, it's, it's the genealogy of the children of Israel. And there are some names in there. Some big gods in there that you decide, you know what? I'm going to start in the New Testament. And during those nine chapters, there are over 600 names listed in the genealogy. But in the middle of that, 600 names. In the middle of those names, we come across this man named Jabez. And the Bible took time out to give this man special recognition. Out of the 600 people as mentioned, he is given a, a very honorable mention among these 600 names. And he gets two verses to him in the biblical record. And these two verses tell us that he lived a life that was above average, even though he didn't start out that way. What did he do that caused his name to be preserved for over 4,000 years? And in 2023, we're talking about him. I'll tell you what it is. Verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother named him Jabez, saying... Because I bore him in pain. Now, Jabez calling the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my borders, and that your hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. And listen to this. And God granted him what he requested. 
that was a believing prayer. Very short. You know, he didn't go the way we do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, thou who created the universe from A to B, L, bam, 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 bam. God said, let your word be few. Yeah. And Jabez said, I'm going to be few because God liked to listen to proper exaltation and proper representation of who I am before him. And he just come and he says, the Bible said he was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother, can you imagine his mother named him Jabez? We're going to look into that later on. What the name means. And Jabez prayed to God, I want you to bless me, Lord. I, I, I want to... I want you to enlarge my territory. Let your hand be on me and keep me from harm. Why, Jabez? That I will be free from pain. Tells me something. He knew pain. God gave him the desire of his heart. There are three secrets to this man's life. Three principles that can help us today, you and I, to live above the average. And it doesn't matter what you got. You can live above the average. It's interesting when the psalmist says, this poor man cried. He was poor. He didn't have nothing. But he cried to the Lord. And the Lord heard me and came to my age and made me something significant. Because guess what? I'm writing to tell you about it. When nobody else expected anything from me, God did, because I knew him. So I, I suggest to you then this morning that the first one of these principles is that Jabez had a great ambition. How many of you remember, I don't know if you all come from, well, we're from the Caribbean, most of us. But one of the favorite things I used to remember people telling people in my little um, why was I saying no? My little um, continent. No, no, continent. Um, I was looking for the word continent. Where the continent of the Caribbean, okay, was you don't have no ambition. Remember that? Have some ambition, boy. Jabez had a great ambition. While his friends were satisfied for the ordinary with being Mr. Average, Jabez says, I want God to bless me. I want something big. I want to do something significant with my life. I want to be, you know, when I'm dying, gone, somebody can say, that boy make a mark. Even if it's just a mark. Amen? Amen? He didn't want to be ordinary. He wanted to expand. He wanted to grow. He wanted to touch lives. And so he cried to God for a blessing. He cried to God to bless his life. David said, I don't want to just drift. So many people are satisfied with drifting through life. Come see, come saw. You know, they just go along with the flow. Even when people say, I just go along with the flow. You know where the flow can get you? Into the dump, okay? Any dead fish can go along with the flow. You know that? Just bob up and down. And people think they're alive. But when you turn around now to swim against the tide, and they're saying to you, why bother? You said, why bother? Brother, man, there's a goal up ahead. And it only comes when I struggle. Because when I struggle, I have. What's wrong with you? You know, you're not with me or what? I have what? Okay, okay, all right, laugh. Laugh if you want to. I don't have any. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I remember listening to my, my wife. Can you imagine that? My wife, Sister Claudette. We're talking, people were talking about my, you know what she said? She said one thing about Orlando. He never had any muscle. (laughs) And I thought I'm in bad shape because when she met me, I was like this, you know. (laughs) 
But Jabez said, I don't want to go along with the crowd. Yeah. And our black men in this city yeah. need to learn yeah. and make a decision yeah. that I will not go along with the crowd. Right. Yeah. Because you know where the crowd leads them? Yeah. They have a whole section in Pine Hill. Yeah. You look at those gravestones, yes. and they are all born yes. in 2000 yes. or the late 90s. Mm -hmm. yes. With all that talent, mm -hmm. that possibility, yes, right. nobody stopped to say, I, I want to achieve something. Yes. We just kind of hang on to the back of the pack, mm -hmm. and then when we get caught, we go, oh, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. How'd you get there? Yes. Just floating along. Bobbing along with the crowd. JB said, I'm not going to do that. I want God's blessing on my life. I want to make something of my life. I want to be a man with responsibilities. Sad part about it, most of them, by the time they're 19 and 20, they're gone. And they left babies. No guidance. No possibilities. So if you want to live above average, the first principle is that you need a great ambition. You need a dream. And you need to dream. If you don't have a dream, you are drifting. And when you stop dreaming, you start dying. When you stop setting goals, you stop growing. You must have some goal, something to you are pushing towards. A goal of excellence, to be better than your daddy was. You see, as long as you, your horizon is expanding, you will be emotionally healthy human being. God made you for growth. God expects great things from you. He wants to grow and to stretch you so that you may develop into all that he intends for your life. God does have a purpose for your life because you matter to God. And your key to success is to discover the purpose that God has for your life. And then... Go along with what you know God has for your life. A life with no challenge and no goal is boring. Get up from morning to, you wonder why sometimes you get up. And they say that. I remember seeing a guy, he's a, he's a farmer, he's got a massive farm, making millions. And guess what? After all that millions he made, guess what he did? He buy a lot of 647. I know what happened. That son of a gun won. Four million bucks. A couple weeks later, guess who bought a ticket? His wife. And she won. And he looked at me and said, Orlando is so boring. I don't know what to do with myself. So I said to him, well, get in your truck and drive around. and get. He said, I did that this morning. I'm bored stiff. I said, well, why don't you help people? Help people, you know? Sell the farmer. He said, well, I can't do that. Because he hired a lot of Caribbean people to come and work for him. He said, I can't do that. He said, who's going to take care of my, my people? I admired him for that. So what does he do? He spent half his time in Jamaica. Just wandering around among his workers and doing his thing. I said, that, even that. He's even approached the government to make it to start a farm down there. But he's saying those guys down here are a bunch of jokers. So that's giving him something to hang on to do with all the money he's got. He said, if I live to be a thousand, I won't need any more money. And you know me, I'm very modest. I didn't say anything to him. I, 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 was, I should say, slip me a few, you know, and I'll be. But I hinted. He just didn't get the hint. <laughs> you know. 
God wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to be successful. He wants you to be able to achieve. Not sit back and expect it to fall in your lap. But by using the tools he's given you to be all that you can be. He wants us to achieve. You know, a lot of us, we confuse things, don't we? And there are three common mistakes that we make, or three common misconceptions that keep us from having a great ambition. The first one is that we confuse humility with fear. We confuse Humility with fear. We say, oh, I could never do that. And we think we're being humble. But that's false humility. That's fear. That's a lack of faith. If you are really humble, what would you say? You would say, by the grace of God, I'm going to do that. Yes. With God's blessing, I will do that. Yes. I may not be able to do it on my own, yes. but with God. Yes. Remember last week we talked about God in a boat. Yes. With God, yes. all things are possible. Yes. Right? Yes. That's why I like sports people, you know. I like um, Steph Curry. I don't know if you've noticed, this guy is an amazing basketball player. Best in the world. Yes, on his shoe. You know what he's got on his shoe? Mm -hmm. Philippians 4, mm -hmm. 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He wears his testimony and shoes. So when you see him make them fancy move, guess what? Yes. He's saying, thank you, Lord. Yes. <laughs> Didn't know I got that one in me. He says, I can do all things. Through Christ. So don't confuse lack of faith with humility. Secondly, we tend to confuse contentment with laziness. Hey, I don't hear somebody say, <laughs> Am I touching somebody corn now? We confuse contentment with laziness. Yes. Now, we know that Paul says, in, and we love to quote the scripture, right? Yes. Where Paul says, I've learned to be content in whatever situation I find myself in. Right? Yes. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't set goals. He didn't say, I have learned not to set goals. I don't have any ambitions or future desire because I've made them and didn't work. No, he says, even though, what he's really saying is, even though my goals may not be reached, I have learned to enjoy each day. And I like to think that I'm enjoying it to the fullest. I'm squeezing every little bit of juice I can get out of the day. And even though I may not have realized my dreams, I can circle around and come up with something else. Because God's given me the strength and the wherewithal to do that. So don't confuse contentment with laziness. If contentment were used as an ex excuse for laziness, who would worry about world hunger or health? Nurse wouldn't go and practice nursing. They would say, why bother? God will do it. Who worry about uh, 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 justice and education? Now, a a third grade kid could say, I have learned to be content with third grade. I don't have to go to fourth. 
But we have people, grown-ups, saying that. I'm content to be in third grade. I'm satisfied right here. Because you don't attempt anything. You don't fail. Well, guess what? It's the other way around. So let's not confuse contentment with laziness. Thirdly, we confuse small thinking for spirituality. And we try to sound very good with that, don't we? Have you ever heard someone say, oh, I serve God in my own little way. You know what I feel like saying? Why don't you try serving him in a big way and see what he can really do. But you know, you got to be polite. But sometimes you got to wake him up, shock him, you know. You know, I'm convinced that some of the people who are in churches today are secret agents of the devil himself. Every time you try to do something, oh, I don't think it works. Well, you know, pastor, I was up this church over here and this and this. I don't want to hear that. God has given us a vision. Let's work with God. See what God's going to do. Let's stand back and behold the hand of Almighty God in our lives. And we don't have to be no big shots. We don't have to be pastors and deacons. God has more spiritual children than pastors and deacons. And sometimes the deacons and, and, the, and pastors, you know, they need to get out the way and let God work with his people. And so they say, well, you know, I tried that before. I just give up. They say, like, I'm just the way I am. I can't help it. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. And my question to them is, why are you blaming God? It's not the way he made you. He made you to grow. He made you to have territory. So don't confuse small thinking to spirituality. Have a great ambition. Everything may not work out, but you don't know that. Keep going. The second principle for living above the average is that you need a faith that is growing. A lot of us have stagnant faith. We ain't getting anywhere. Oh, we've done everything. It's not going to work. You see, Jabez not only had a great ambition, he had a growing faith. He believed that whatever I ask God for, God will grant. James says, some of you are asking, but you don't believe me, so God is saying, don't waste my time. He had a deep trust and belief in God. He had enough faith to pray and expect God to answer him. Some of you are praying, you don't expect God to answer you. The moment you start talking about God if, God if, God if this and if that, God said, when you're ready, Come. Boldly to my throne of grace. When you say if, that's not coming boldly. That's hedging your bet. That's almost going, um, um, well, well, you know, God, um, if you'll do this. Uh, there's no if with God. Jesus didn't say, come if you think God is going to answer your prayer. He says, come boldly before his presence with a thankful heart and laid out before God. Because guess what? You can tell God anything you want to. Matter of fact, some of the things you can tell God, you can't tell your best friend. Because you know what they'll do. And some of them will hold it against you. And if you want to get on the internet, tell some of the friends that you got. Especially if it's secret. You go on the internet sometimes see people put, um, well, I'm going to lunch now. Who cares? 
I don't want to know. Find something that will lift people up. Get off an internet. So Jabez says, you know what? I'm going to trust God. Because he's able. He's able. You've got to be like William Carey, that old missionary who says, attempt great things for God. I love that. Attempt great things for God. And expect great things from God. Oh, you might say, but maybe God will do it for so and so, but not me. Guess what? You ain't going to get nothing from God. Come boldly to the throne of grace to receive what? Mercy. And whatever else you need for the day, come boldly. You'll notice that the Bible doesn't say that Jabez had any special ability or talent. You notice that? It doesn't say whether he was rich or educated. He's just a simple man with an extraordinary faith. So don't worry about what you don't have. If you have faith, you can move mountains, Jesus says. God will give you the necessary power that you need to perform that which he's called you to do. And I think he takes great delight in using ordinary people because he know they won't turn around and have big argument with him. All he needs to see is your faith. I believe I have a God who can move mountains and he can, and sometimes you know what he do? He make a path through the mountain. Jabez's faith caused him to believe that God will help him. To achieve his dreams. And God did. God did. There is something more important than being talented. More important than education. And that's faith. You know, I know, I know a lot of, of talented people who are wasting their lives. I remember one in particular, you know, uh, uh, this was an opera singer. She was one of the best there was. But she was one of the first opera, opera singer that was thrown out of the Metropolitan Theater of America. Why? Because she was talented, but she was rough. She used her talent to beat people. I heard she used to slap people when they didn't do what she said immediately. Well, maybe it's because her name was Battle. She thought she had to fight her way through. But I know all those talented people, and yet you know people that you said who don't have any talents, they're making touchdowns. I had a cousin, I remember going home and saying, somebody said, his sister said to me, look at him. He's not a millionaire, you know. He's a billionaire. And they wrote him off in school. I remember that. I remember going home and he said to me, you remember how you used to sit down and put me in your lap and use my hand and help me to write numbers? He called all his workers. I want you to take a look at this guy. This is my cousin. Taught me to read and write. I didn't remember that. But he did. When everybody write him off, he says, no, I don't have much. But he was a hustler. He was the one who says, goes to the bank and says, I want you to Loan me some money to buy a, a taxi. <laughs> Look at him and say, you're crazy? And he kept on going, but one bank looked at him and said, this boy have ambition. He gave him money for a tow truck. He said, when I got that, God just began to lift me up. And I began to swear, and he said, Look at me now. And I tell any one of them, so my, my song to them is, keep going. Find something. He may be not up to somebody's standard. He may be thinking that it's beneath me. There's nothing in this world that's beneath us. If it's going to get you where you want to, it's the vehicle that's going to take you to your dreams. 
Another thing about Jabez, apparently, he had some kind of a handicap or disability. In the Hebrew language, his name means painful. Can you imagine giving your kid name painful? When he comes out, you don't have to say, how you doing? You know, painful. Which, this is for free. You folks out there giving you, making up name for your kids. Stop it. Okay, stop it. There's no girl you should be called Big Isha. You're marking them for life and for laughter. Be careful. Names are important. But apparently, his name was painful. His mother, of all people, <laughs> called him painful. <laughs> you know. The Bible said he caused his mother so much pain at birth that she called him painful. He may be, he might have been unwanted or unloved. His name reminds him every day that he had caused somebody pain. But he was stronger than his handicap because he had faith that God could change his life. He had faith to look ahead. He, could, he said to himself, when people look at me, all they think about is pain, God. And this is wearing me down. But you are the God who can change my whole paradigm. And God, I'm trusting you. Because I have no other way to look. He was stronger than his handicap. And so he kept going. He had faith to look ahead. And said, there's something better for me. The question this morning then is, what is your handicap? Is it physical? Is it spiritual? Is it an unhappy childhood? A lot of us gone through that. But you gotta, you got to get over it. Really. And I don't mean that glibly. I'm serious. you got to move on. You got to move on. You got to see your possibilities. That they might have handicapped me at home, but boy, with God's help, I'm going to be a conqueror. Because I'm going to conquer my handicap. And with God's working with me and molding me, I'm going to stand up strong. You can discourage me all you want, but you're just one person. I have God on my side. So I don't worry about what you think. Whatever it is, your handicap, I mean. You know what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 23? All things are possible for those who believe. This is from the word of God. Not just a word, written word of God, but from the Son of God. He said, if you got faith, you can overcome any handicap you have. When you think of what people can do to mess you up. So have a great ambition and develop a growing faith. You keep your house and God, God, you know, uh, give me faith. You gotta find the kernel within you. Because Jesus said, if, you, if it's there like a mustard seed. So what we should be praying for, Lord, like the man who said to Jesus, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Because I need to get over the hump. And only you can help me. The third secret then of Jabez's life was his prayer life. That's always the big thing with us, isn't it? Prayer. We talk about it, but most time we don't do a lot about it, do we? And it was Jabez's simple prayer request that got him an honorable mention in the middle of 600 men and women, right? Actually, 600 men. 
and we're talking about him thousands of years later. Maybe you have hesitated to ask for things in prayer. Maybe you felt your request is selfish. Maybe you, you feel that God is, is too busy to deal with your little picky own thing. Isn't that funny? God says, come to me. Not with some of your troubles. All of your troubles. Come. So you might be asking, what kind of prayer does God answer? I think J.B.'s life illustrates three things we can ask God for and expect him to answer. Notice that J.B.'s first request was what? He asked for God's power in his life. I think that must just delight the Lord when we come to him and say, Lord, I'm without strength. And, and I need your help. So Jabez prayed, I want you to bless me. I want your power in my life. Because my name is painful. And I'm not getting anywhere, Lord. I am the laughing stock of my district. So I need your power. Because these people need to see that I'm not a wimpy old painful, but I'm the man who is under the power of Almighty God. He was specific. You know, sometimes we come to God and we beat around the bush, we even with God. Well, you know, Lord, um, last week so and so happened, and you know, I was noticing so and so, and on and on we go, and God is sitting there looking at Jesus going, Here we go again. Let your words be few. Didn't I tell you that? Yes. Come to the point. Because I know all you little circling, I know what you're heading for. So just spill it. Talk to me. I am God. I created you. You're an image bearer. I'm concerned for you. Don't come doubting. James says if you doubt, you're like a, a, a wave of the wind blowing it on yonder. You know, like a whirlwind. Nobody knows where you're going. God said, be specific. Tell me your troubles. Amen. Do you pray about your goals? Jabez motivates. I mean, his motives were genuine because God answered. What's the lesson we learn? God dares you to make your, your request. And he says, According to James, you don't have because you don't ask. And when you do ask, you do it with the wrong motive. You're doing it to look good. You're doing it to show off. God said, I'm not into that. Because I don't have to show off. Look around you. If anybody has a reason to show off, it's God, isn't it? Create a tree, let me see. Let it grow. Let me see. But God don't brag. After he created, what did God say? It's good. God created the light. Separate light from darkness. And God said, hmm, that's good. We created a motorbike. And we went, Fantastic! God created the stars and put them into place. Sea and rivet full with fish. And God says, hmm, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I wonder what God ever says, great. Let's be like our Heavenly Father then. It's good. No big deal. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than I can think or imagine. That's my God. He's a big God. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Jeremiah says, call on me. And I will answer you. And then here's God. I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know about. God said, I'll give you secrets nobody in the world knows. Call on me. I'll lead you through this. 
And then Paul in Ephesians chapter four, 3 says, God is able to do immeasurably more than all you can ask or imagine. How, Paul? According to his power, that is the work within us. Jabez recognized that and said, Lord, let your power flow. Because I'm the proper receptacle for your power. Because they call me painful. The only way I'm going to be pain free is if you build me and you change my life. That means you cannot out ask God. You can't ask God for things that God don't possess. Whatever you need, God has. You know what I mean? You cannot out dream God to make your dreams big. Because he can do things beyond your imagination. And then he said to you and me, trust me. Trust me. People tell you to trust them, right? And, and these days, when somebody said to me, trust me, I'm going to mark that guy. Because I know one thing, I can't trust him. You see, the word trust me these days is to kind of lull you into sleep. And then, wham! But when God said, trust me, he said, look at the universe. If you can trust me for sunshine and rain, trust me. Why? Because I'm able. I'm an able God. And besides, I love you with an everlasting love. You can't understand that. But for now, just trust me. Just trust me. I'm going to do far beyond you can think or imagine. Trust me. Ask things. Like Jabez. Have a great ambition. If you want to live a successful life. Have a great ambition. Then get a faith that is growing. That is trusting. And God says bring that to me. Bring it to me. In prayer. And I will lift you up. As a matter of fact. He's going to say this. Sometimes I'll carry you. When it's necessary. But not, I'm not going to carry you. When you still have enough strength to walk. Amen. Amen. You've got to do your part. And I'll do my part. So what do you want God to do for your life today? He's waiting. Because he's ready and he's able to use you in ways that you'll never understand. Is it a relational problem? Bring it to him. Is there a need? Bring it to him. Because he's concerned and he wants to bless you, not to frustrate you. Notice the second thing Jabez prayed for was God's presence in his life. He said, let your hand guide me. How many of you are saying that to God? God, guide me. Start, instead of running to Tom, Dick, and Harry. Jabez realized that if I get some territory, that, makes, that means I have more responsibility. He wants responsibility. I have greater demands and more pressure, and I need God's help. I need God's wisdom. So he asked for God's patient presence in his life, and he got it. God will give you his presence, and he will work in you and through you. And he will always answer your prayer when you ask him for patience in your life. He will always ask. Because patience, you know, is a gift of the Spirit. Third thing he prayed for God was protection over his life. Keep me from harm. You ever pray that? Yes. Keep me from harm. You got it. And that is tr still true now. We need that. Lord, when you look around what's going on in our world, Lord, keep me from harm. The more successful you are, the more critics you have, the more territory you own, the, the more enemies you seem to draw. 
the closer you grow to God, the stronger you become as a Christian. You need to know that the more the devil will harass you because he doesn't want you to grow. But just as Jabez was confident in God's protection, you don't have to fear anyone anymore when you give your life to God. If you embrace the three requests, Jabez prayed, I think you will have an amazing life. You will live above the average. Average is no way to live. Don't you want to break out of mediocrity? Do you want to see God at work in your life? Do you want to see real answers to prayer? And by the way, don't go telling people, oh, I've been praying about but God won't answer. That's whining. God don't like whiners. Stop drifting. Not knowing where you're going. Find a place to stand. And take your stand. Because the Bible said, having done all, stand. Even when you're weak, stand. Stand. So get a great ambition. Get a glimpse of what God wants to do in your life. Get a grown faith. A faith that enables you to expect impossible things to happen in your life mm -hmm. and establish a relationship with the Lord that you can come into his presence anytime and say Abba Father learn how to be intimate with the God and God who sits in heaven will be glorified because of your faith and he will make you a man or a woman who lives above the average. May God bless you. Cause his face to shine on you. And give you purpose. Give you his power. Give you his protection. And may his presence go with you. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. You are an amazing God. We thank you that you draw us to yourself. Because we are here in this building this morning because of our faith. So I pray, Lord God, that you suit a blessing to each one. You know, the things that is just been a hindrance and just been nipping at their heels. You know that the enemy has accusations against us. We pray this morning that you will cancel everyone. We recognize that no weapons formed against the people of God can prosper. Therefore, Lord, tear down the lies, tear down the accusations. Free us that we may grow in faith and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. To you be honor and blessing. Amen and amen. Take time to be holy. 482. Will you stand and let us sing?
Take time to be holy, let him be your guide. Spend, run not before him, whatever be tied. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever be tied, we will continue to trust in your word because we believe it is life. And in it is the power to overcome whatever obstacles that we face. There's the protection that you are our shield. And then there's your presence. Go with us then today. All week long, O oh Lord. May your presence be evident in us, through us, and around us. And give us the confidence of knowing that you're with us every second of the day. Because Jesus says, I will come to you. And that tells me that whatever and whenever we get into a corner or we get into a fix or we get into a place where we do not believe we have the power to escape that is with us. And he will always be pointing, here is the way, walk ye in it. So make us sensitive to your leading today. And now, Father, as we separate one from another, go with us to our separate places of abode and remind us constantly of your amazing love and your desire to see us live above the ordinary. So help us this week, O oh Lord, that we will live above the average above the ordinary by your grace and your mercy. Now, Lord, as we leave here, allow your spirit to fill us one more time because we need the power of God. We need the presence of God and we need the purpose of God. Go with your people now because, Lord, God is a war out there. Fit us for the battle and give us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the Lord go with you. The Lord protects and shields you and give you his peace. In every and any situation. Amen. Amen.
been working with this for three weeks. You can tell I stayed up for a